Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be getting our plants out of the small greenhouse and into the big greenhouse. I should have done this last week but unfortunately I kind of injured myself while doing my garden chores and I've been out of commission so uh, it's a bit overdue but probably for the best because the weather has been pretty cold again this week. Hoping that it's going to start warming up again but Regardless, we're going to be getting these plants into there. Before we get started in here, I'm going to take you back to what I was doing last week where I was sifting some compost and then uh, I'll take you right back to what we're doing inside here. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you will recognize this thing over here. This is my sifter for my compost and I'll put a link up above here for the video that I show how I built this thing but essentially you'll see one big difference and that is this motor down here. So in the video uh, you would have noticed that I used a sander that I bought off eBay quite cheap and that works fine if you're doing small batches of compost. The problem is it will burn out if you're using it constantly for about an hour or so. So what I did is I went and got one of these. I think it cost me about 50 pounds but with the fact that I can sift a ton of compost without having to uh, worry about this thing breaking down um, that's just worth it to me. It ends up saving me money especially for the amount of compost that I actually I'm going to be sifting. So today I'm going to be sifting most of this for my uh, chili plants. They're going to be going in the greenhouse and we need to sift all of this and get it into nice fine compost. So let me get started with that and uh, I'll leave a link down below. I'll try and find the link for where I bought this motor. Um, it's, I can't remember what I searched for. I think it's an industrial vibrating motor careful because there's some other results that come up as well but uh, let me show you how it works and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with it so let me get started and I'll be right back with you So just after that I had switched off everything, I had stopped filming because I had stuck a garden fork into my foot. Uh, I went almost all the way through and thankfully it didn't hit any bones so I didn't break anything but yeah it was a stupid thing to do. I'm feeling a lot better now, it's still a bit swollen but we need to get on with things so at least I'm walking around okay now. So let's get started in here. Actually before we get into the small greenhouse I need to get inside the big greenhouse because it's a bit of a mess and before we can get any plants in here I need to clear some space so first of all let's just come into here and try and get this place sorted out. You can see I've just got a bit of a mess the work I've been doing in here. Um, one thing to point out is I've got this thing all working the way I wanted to. I uh, kept the design pretty much the same with what I did over here. The design for that's a little different. I'll try and put an image on the screen of what I did there but essentially uh, well I reprinted things in red just because and uh, what I did is I made these slits a little bit bigger and I made this thing a bit smaller it didn't need to be as long as this so I'll show you a picture on the screen and you'll see what I've done but the concept's pretty much the same but this is working well it's uh, up and running with my advanced hydro system over here so let me just turn that on you can see it light up and it's going to turn on again in 41 minutes. Um, yeah, it's doing a good job. It takes about three minutes to flood because I have switched pumps. That's the pump I was using. The pump I'm using now is a 300 gallon per hour. The other one was 1100 gallon per hour and it was just still just spraying water everywhere. There's way too much pressure. But this 300 gallon per hour one is doing a great job. Before I get started with the tidying, I uh, just want to point out I'm not having a lot of luck with my uh, my peas in the gutter system here. So I don't know what's going on here. Might just dump these out 
um, for now and just go back to my old method of doing things which was just planting individual seed pods inside seed trainers. Let me get to this. I've got a lot of tidying to do and I've got to get these trays back in place. Uh, I've got to make sure that the drip watering system is all clear so I'll need to run some fresh water through it. So let's take one more look inside here before we take everything out. We can see that that has really done a great job. Um, I've already got some ideas for next year. I don't think I'll be using the greenhouse again next year. Well, not in this way at least. The, uh, the T5s have done probably a lot better than the, the LEDs, but could be a few reasons for that. I'm not too worried about it. Um, we've got enough growth, so they would get themselves kick-started for the season. But I'm going to take these all out of here now and we're going to start taking them through to the big greenhouse. So this is what I like to see when I walk into my greenhouse. It is starting to look like a greenhouse again. Um, I did notice a few problems when I started moving these plants around and I will show you what those are. Firstly, I'm seeing quite a lot of aphids. Um, you can see a couple plants have really been stunted by this. If I grab this one. So let's take a look at this plant here. Firstly, it's got <laughs> something else growing out of here as well, so we need to get rid of that. But the issue that we're seeing here, if you see this crinkled up, when these leaves go all crinkled like that, well, it's pretty obvious what the problem is. I can see them right there, uh, these stupid little insects they are devouring my plant so it's not the end of the world i can fix it i just need to yeah i can see a, a live one over here uh, there's quite a few on here basically they're aphids or white fly or green fly i treat them all exactly the same i use my neem oil mix so i'll leave a link up on the top here for a video where i talk about that and uh, you can see how I mix it. But for now, I need to give these a spray. I'm actually gonna show you a few other little things here that we need to do, um, and also some, some good things that are happening here as well. So first things first, this thing over here, this is a KN, and uh, it's getting very lanky, <laughs> and there's too much space in between these leaves, and I am going to actually cut it down a little bit. Just nice clean pair of scissors. So you don't want tall plants like that because it won't be able to support itself. It's trying to reach for light and uh, it will sort itself out. I'm pretty happy with that, that it will recover. We can see there's some more aphids on this plant over here, loads of them over there. So I'm gonna treat these as well. Actually, I'm gonna treat all the plants. I just don't wanna risk having aphids destroy my crop, but these will recover. I'm not too fussed about it. They're just a pain in the backside. What you wanna do is get a bunch of uh, Ladybugs in here, that'll sort them out. This here is my Ramiro plant and we can see there's already peppers coming through. There's one <laughs> starting to grow already. Uh, there's a bunch of flowers in here, that thing's really keen. I might just nip these off. I'll decide later, I'm not gonna do that now. Let's take a look at the hydroponics and you can see the growth there has just been amazing. Um, 
down here a little bit less growth, but that's probably because of the warmth. There's probably more warmth up at the higher levels. So one thing I did notice the other day is this guy here is not doing very well. Uh, I'm not too sure why. I might be able to recover it, but at the moment he's, uh, he's not doing too great. I think that uh, some snails got hold of it, but I'm not too sure. Should be able to recover it. We'll see. So this is where it gets interesting. I've been growing chili peppers in soil for a long, long time, and I've got my system down pretty well. It's pretty successful and I get great harvests every year. Never have really too many big problems. I know how to sort them out if I do. Hydroponics, however, is a whole new ball game. And so far, so good. I've managed to keep these guys alive, but it hasn't been too difficult. It's the system here has been pretty straightforward. Um, now the challenge is moving it into the greenhouse here. Obviously the temperatures are still quite low. I know that my soil plants will be fine. Um, again, due to experience and I know how they will uh, adapt to this weather and I know that it's going to get warmer soon. However, the hydroponics with the flood table that I have behind me, the water itself is going to be quite cold. Uh, I'm not too sure how the plants are going to react to that, but trial and error, I'm always up for a, a bit of an experiment. So this year I, I kind of I kind of just see it as a bit of an experiment and uh, we'll see whether I like growing it this way um, and you know obviously I've got some big decisions to make next year if I do but let's get started with putting some of these hydroponic plants into the grow bed but before I do that I need to mix up some nutrients and get them into the, the water. So let's have a look at our competition poblano this is the hydroponics one and it's doing really well. It's a beautiful plant. Um, those roots are looking good. And there are a few aphids on this, but I'm not too worried about it. You can see I've already had to cut it here because when I had it inside there, it was <laughs> hitting the, the top here quite a bit. So we're gonna put this inside here. I'm still trying to figure out the spacing. I needed to figure out a way how to tag these things as well and I came up with this thing here. So I'll use these as well for the ones in the uh, in the polytunnel over there because they'll be in the ground and I don't want to use little tags in the ground. It'd be a bit easier to use these labels. The sun is going down and I'm pretty much done for today. I've got what I wanted to get done, done. Um, a lot of what I haven't shown you is the wiring and that that I had to finish up with my automation, uh, with the pumps and that sort of thing. That took me a good few hours. But I've been at this since 9 a.m. Uh, what I wanted to get done by the end of today was get my hydro plants into, into their final places. And I've done that. I um, hope I got the spacing right. I think some of them are a bit too close together, but to be honest, the one that I really am watching is the one right over there. And that's our competition Poblano. So we'll keep an eye on that through the season. I'm just hoping it lasts through the night. Um, you know, I'm a bit nervous, obviously, with hydroponics. I don't know how they're going to react to the cold water. We'll see. I will check on them tomorrow morning. But the rest of the plants, I'm going to leave them in the small plots. They're in uh, one liter pots. I need to do some work in the polytunnel tomorrow and uh, finish up in there so that I can actually get some of these into there because there are about 100 plants here and I can only fit about 50 inside the greenhouse. So the other 50, they need to go inside the polytunnel. So I can only do that once I've finished up in there. But anyway, these guys aren't ready yet to be potted up. I'm going to give them a week or two just to acclimatize in this environment and then we'll do the potting up. So of course I'll film that and let you guys see what I, what I do with that. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye for now. Old man, old man, they're coming.